New beginnings, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to share a little bit. God has impressed in my heart. Um, I have jumped from one church to another church. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> been hopping. But God is so good. I just want to encourage you with this word um, in worship today and in worship here. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Amen. Hallelujah. You're still in love. He's still in love with you. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 7, verse 18. Hallelujah. And it says, and I'm reading from the NIV. Praise God. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless. For the Lord made nothing perfect. And a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then if we jump to John chapter 6, verse 44, and this is the ESV version. It says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So you are here because you were drawn here. This is your church. These are your pastor. There's a vision and a mission for this ministry. There's a vision and a mission that, ha that God has for you to fulfill this time, this season, to grow and to equip and to make disciples. Amen. And I'm going to leave you with Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Amen. For he chose us in him. Amen. You were chosen in him. Say it. I am chosen. I am chosen. Declare it. I am chosen. Amen. In him before the creation of the world. To be holy. Declare it. I am holy. I am blameless. In his sight. Not your sight. In his sight. Amen. Whose sight? Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, in love. In love. Right? Praise God. He predestined us. Say, in love, he predestined me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship to Christ Jesus. Amen. So we are sons and daughters. We are chosen. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. Hallelujah. You still need to be in love with Christ Jesus because you're chosen. Amen. I'm going to give it to my husband, my pastor, <laughs> Baker. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> pastor Matt, every week I say, sounds like Pastor Brenda should preach. And she says, no. Then she comes up and preaches. <laughs> I don't know. Amen. We haven't forgotten our sister who's we're still waiting for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Are we good? Are we good? Yes. Because yes. we're going to talk back. You are. Or I'll come and get you. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give honor to God. We give honor to God. <laughs> yeah, we give honor to God. Brother Jay. Where's my brother Jay? You my brother Jay. Yeah, because Yeah, that's right, it's just Brother Jay now. Shorten it up. If the president walked in, what would we do? We would stop. And I say we honor God and it's flat as can be. <laughs> I just, I don't get it sometimes. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords is here. I don't get it. Yeah. It's not for me. It's for him. Yes. I love the Lord. 
Okay. And that wasn't manipulation to get you to stand. It's an attitude. It's an attitude about who is he? That's my father, the king, the Lord. Yes. And to the son, Jesus. Yes. And to the Holy Spirit. We just honor them, amen, with the fruit of our lips. The sacrifice of praise unto him. Wow. To mom and dad. <laughs> that was a dance. Yeah, that's how I honor him. Yeah. Get excited. Yes, when I see you worship. I was watching you. Uh, again, I, he's an example. How's he worship? How's he worshiping? I peeped. I love when he gets lost in worship. Yes, he's an example. Don't come to uh, uh, church to be a spectator. <laughs> Don't come to be a spectator. God wants your participation. It's a co-op. It's a co-op. We work at this together. Amen? Yes. And so we just we honor both of you. Amen. To preacher of the hour, <laughs> Pastor Brenda. To my daughter. Oh, good Lord. Samantha's here. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Got one or two members from Believers here to some friends and some more friends and some more friends and some folks who will be friends when I leave. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You here for a word? Amen. All right. You're here for a word. Okay. Let me get right to it. Um, you're going to be challenged today. Let me Let me just say that. And uh, the, the more I, the older I get and the more I preach, the less I am concerned about your reaction to the word, what God gives you. I used to, ooh, God, you want me to say that? Now it's kind of bold. Let's say that, okay? Let's say it to the Lord. And I say that not with arrogance. Um, I spend a lot of time with God. And so it's not a, I'm not um, confused about God's voice. I'm not, amen, just like I'm not confused about her voice, amen. We spend a lot of time together. I should know his voice, amen. So let's start with a couple of things. Now, if you allow me the privilege of just speaking to you outside of protocol, okay, because there is a rhythm to how we do this. There are some expectations, amen. And so... Um, I want to talk to my brother for a moment, who, who absolutely, <laughs> Proverbs 17 is one of my go-to scriptures. Go to it. Amen. And uh, so there's some moments of prophecy here. So the, the last song we were singing, and you hit a note. Holly, you hit a note. But I didn't hear you. I looked real quickly, and I saw Anna. Oh, my God. I said, God, what are you saying? I said, don't worry about it. Listen. I started listening. In her heart, she's still worshiping. You don't see it, but she's still worshiping. Amen. She's right with me. Woo! And so that's a word. She's right with me. Where could she go that I'm not? <laughs> oh, my God. Trust me. Trust me. Second prophetic word, which happens, this, this is the second time it has happened in a bathroom. I went to Friendship Baptist, and I went to the bathroom, and I was coming out, and God said, go back in. And I went back in, and on the wall it says, all things are possible to them who believe, right? God checked me right there. He said, start telling people. All things are possible is not, a, is not an issue with me. I'm God. I'm God. So there is nothing impossible for me. So it's, the question is not whether God can do it or not. It's do you believe. That's, that's the critical piece there. And, he, and he, he sealed it for me. I'm always looking for a scripture. He said, look at the scripture where it says, it is my will. That none perish, 
have given everyone a way out. But only some believe. It's powerful. Jesus said when in Mark, I'm amazed that in my own hometown, very few folks are healed because they don't believe. And so as you're sitting here, the issue is do you believe? Do you believe? So I'm trying to figure out, I should go to the bathroom before the sermon, just in case I might have to go during the service. I can't leave. I go into the bathroom. Same idea. And I'm leaving. And God said, go back and look again. Another prophetic word on the wall. And I just gave this word this morning. And here it is again. This time I pulled up the, pulled up the, the uh, information. It said, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. In Wednesday's prayer, <clears throat> we were having, it just got rousing prayer. It just one of those elevated, spirit moving prayer. We stopped and a uh, little discussion about what is God saying? And I said to the folks who were there, I am praying. I don't want you to think I'm a pastor and I'm leading you in prayer. I am praying. And here's my prayer. My son, who is a worship leader, who came here in, in, in August 18th, and we had a grand time. Most people don't know that he was the worship leader for um, Pastor John Gray. He is no longer at that church. He felt God called him to something else. What's the something? God didn't tell him. So one month goes by. God, where are you? called me to be a father too and a husband where are you I think I'm hearing you two months three months nobody's calling nobody's calling God I'm waiting for you but now it's getting I got two pennies <laughs> children hungry God where are you little did I know that someone in the audience took a picture of him in worship and they put the caption on the picture I can do all things through Christ. And they sent that to me, and I sent it to him. And I said, I don't know why that person sent that. What the person didn't know, how prophetic that was, is that's the first scripture that I taught Jonathan. Jonathan, in turn, Completely different. All things through Christ. That's my God. Jonathan teaches his son the same scripture. And God said, In that, I got you. I got you. Don't move. I got you. You can stand. You can stand. And so stand. When you've done all that you can do, stand. And so now here's a word for everybody, a word for you, a word for me, a word for everybody. This, the, the title of the sermon, I believe, is, what is it? N no, that's not it. I, 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 was, I was so counting. There it is. Is Jesus your treasure? There you go. Yeah, I'm reading all the time. What do we call it? Take it out of Scripture. One Scripture, Matthew 6, 21. Your treasure and heart are in the same place. Your treasure, where your treasure is, there's your heart. Where your treasure is, there's your heart. And so listen closely to the message. And I'm going to go through quickly the, the chapter 6 of Matthew. But God has some very specific questions he wants to talk to you about. He's, he's definitely putting us on notice. And the first thing is, what if, what if you prayed and not asked for one thing? First of all, would you pray? If you prayed, how long would your prayer be? I mean, not one time are you asking for anything. God, I just want to be with you, just you. 
All I want, all I need, all I see is you. Why is that important? I'm talking to some mature Christians now. Is because in Matthew, he starts out by saying, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Then he goes through and says, I'm going to teach you how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'm going to tell you that this Father will answer everything, not because you ask for it. It's because he's a good Father and has prepared everything from the foundation or before the foundation of the world. He has taken care of all of your need and made it accessible to you Whew. by your belief. It, you, you have access. He says in Ephesians, and, and Pastor Brenda said it, all spiritual blessings, all of them are in you and sealed by the Holy Spirit. What is God doing? Nothing. God's not making anything now. Woo, I get, ex get excited with this. Have you not read the Bible? And I say that not in jest because most people have a Bible. And most people don't read it until they need it. <laughs> you have a Bible. And God has started a pattern that he said he's not violating because he's perfect. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Then he put man in first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. Made man on the sixth day, but he had prepared everything before man got there. And then he put man in a perfect world. Then he says, wait a minute, let me show you the pattern again. Jesus said, it is finished. All of this is finished before you have to do anything. I go away to do what? Prepare a place for you. I'm going to get it ready for you. What do you have to do? Receive it. I'm that kind of God. I'm that kind of son. Then the Holy Spirit says, guess what? Got your seal, baby. Got your seal. Just walk in the newness of life. Just walk in it. Guess what? God has ordered your steps. He directs your path. He knows exactly everything that you need and every person that you need to meet. Everything has been ordered and arranged for you. What are you doing? Receiving. Receiving. I'm glad children are not here so I can talk to a mature adult audience. Because Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. In the beginning, God said, I'm going to make man. But it's not good for man to be alone. So I'm going to make a woman a perfect complement to the man. He did not make them the same. He did not make them to save. I mean, the same. He made one a giver, a distributor, and he made the other a receiver. Woo! He said, now, get the pattern. Giver, receiver. I, the Father, give to you a perfectly Perfect compliment. I do not need anything from you. I'm God. I don't need anything from you. My name says I'm self-reliant, self-existent. Elohim within myself. Everything is in me. But I made you, created you out of love. I know that you have need of me because you're not God. So the relationship is I give to you. Your responsibility is to receive from me that I prepared for you. Grace is what I'm talking about. Unmerited favor. You don't have to earn and work for it, anything. God said, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> if you don't ask for things. You're good. God says, I've given you provision to petition me. You can. But the scriptures that say, remind me, you're not reminding me. I'm omniscient. I know all things. You're going to tell me something, hold me accountable for me? 
I exalt my name, high, I mean the word higher than my name. I, my word is important to me. I hasten to perform it. You don't have to remind me. So why does he have scriptures like that? Because he said, I'm going to tell you before it happens so that when it happens, ye shall believe because the reception is in your belief. And I want you to articulate what you believe, not for you, not for me, for the unbeliever around you. Say it loud. How do you know it's going to happen? Because God is God. That's how I know. God is God. And he never fails in his promises. But the crick is rising, and God is still God. Woo! If you didn't have to pray things, how would you pray? And even if you pray things, which God allows, if you pray things, where are you putting the emphasis? On the things or your relationship with God? Even when you pray things, do you put more emphasis on the things? Listen closely. Word from God. I may have to ruin your plans so you don't ruin mine. <laughs> Woo! I may have to ruin your plans so you don't ruin mine. Genesis chapter 6. I had a plan for the earth. Genesis 6 says, Every day man woke up thinking evil only, continuously. I had to ruin man's plans to keep mine in place. Whew. You got some plans, they're kind of crazy. Sometimes I got to move you. I got to shift you. Whew. But fear not. He's got, a, he's got a, a caveat scripture. All things, even the moving, work together for the good. All things will work together. may not have been my original plan, but it's going to work. It's really going to work. You, you can count on it. Whew. I know, Scott, where you're going to end up. I don't know the journey. I mean, he knows the journey. We don't know the journey. But he says, I know exactly where you're going to end up. But I can say that about any of you. If you're a believer, you know where you're going to end up. You know exactly where you're going to end up. Exactly. Because God says, I don't want you to worry about anything. I don't want you worrying. Because you can't concentrate on the important things if you're worried about the little things. Keep your focus on me. Haven't you ever wondered why God said to Moses, tell him I am that I am? What's your name? I am that I am. Because I will be all things all at any time for whatever is needed. Yes, I'm God. All you need is my presence. That's why he's saying you don't have to ask for things. If I'm present and I am, everything that you need is in me. Woo! My God. The character of God is love. The character of God is love. First John chapter 4 verse 8. The character of God. God is love. And everything that God does is motivated because he is love. Love is not something that he does. It is something that he is. Yes, he is love. Whew. So you have to settle. If God doesn't change, I won't change. I won't change. I've got it settled. The Bible says words like reckon it. I have settled some things in my understanding, in my relationship with God. It, it is not that God won't change. It's that God can't change. God cannot change. He is love. He would have to stop being himself to be anything else. Well, who are you? I am a son of the same God who won't change. I have the, the same makeup, the same spirit. And the Bible tells me, if you understand that, get the mind of Christ. 
Seek those things which are above in the heavenly places. Keep your focus on the main things. My God. Thank you. I know. Pastor, again, that this kind of weird confidence. I tell people I bring my own amens. <laughs> I bring them. If no one, I, hey, I agree with the word. Romans 8, 31. Listen closely about the things and asking for things. Romans 8, 31 says, if I have sacrificed my son, why would I withhold anything else? And you didn't do anything to earn that. When was the lamb, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? We, we took care of everything before we got you here. And, and, and if I took care of everything before you got here, why do you think if everything's taken care of that you would have need of anything since I've already taken care of it? Woo! Does the Bible say pray? Yes. Do you have to pray? Yes, but not for things. You pray for relationship. God, give me revelation. More understanding of your son whom you sent. More revelation of your love who you gave. Things, I can ask for them. Let me say it again so that you don't be offended. You can ask for things, but you don't have to. You have children? When they start maturing, little kids, they have to ask. Why? Because they'll go in the refrigerator and it'll be a mess. So that you want them to ask. But as they mature, listen to the word, as they mature, you live here. Get what you want. You live here. I buy the things that I know you like. You like Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops are in the basket. <laughs> I, 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 all this stuff in here? You think I'm just arbitrarily putting it in here? I pay attention to you. Go get it. You don't have to ask for it. Go get it. I'm your father. If you who are evil know how to give, give good gifts, how much more? Your father in heaven. How much more? Oh, my God, my God. It's got to be simple. We crazy, Pop. We crazy. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes we forget, though. And that's why these kind of messages, which are it's simple in nature, are important. Because sometimes in the moment, in the stress, in the adversity, sometimes we forget. So we need to be reminded God is still God, and he, and he does deliver. He does. A couple, couple more things. Whew. My God. There are a couple things. Sim again, it's just simple things. Try to not breathe. Try it. Try to not breathe. You can for a little while. Yeah, hold your breath. Right? Hold your breath. Your body will say, stupid. <laughs> we will die if we don't start breathing again. It's not a good idea. Your body knows that. Your body knows that. Your inner man knows God and what's good for him. Your inner man knows exactly what to do. Amen. If you start breathing, I mean, stop breathing, what's going to happen? I mean, like, completely stop. You pass out, but if you pass out, you start breathing again. If you stop breathing, you die. You got to pay attention to that. Listen closely. Another going to kind of rock your boat, kind of simple. There are some things that God mandates, but he doesn't mandate them because he's this big God. <laughs> That's not why he's mandating. I'm going to mandate that your heart beats. Now, you're ordered to let your heart beat. How much sense does that make? Your heart is beating. God says, I'm ordering your heart to beat. I'm ordering you, ordering you to breathe. How much sense does that make? You're breathing right? 
So why does God mandate certain things? He mandates certain things because they are important to us. It is not that you do them. It's what happens when you're not doing them. It is not about punishment. It's about consequence. If you are not breathing as a consequence, not a punishment, you will die. If I tell you a commandment, love God, love is not love without choice. And so you can choose to love me. You can choose to violate that commandment. But what you really need to do is love me and love your neighbor because when you're not doing that, the world goes into chaos. Your life goes into chaos. It is a consequence of not loving. You are focused on, con on, on uh, punishment, and I'm trying to get you to focus on consequence. Love does not torment. Punishment is tormenting. You can't have me loving you and worried about punishment. But there are consequences to behavior. There are consequences to attitude that I need you to start grappling with. Not because you're afraid of me. It's because you understand these are essential in our relationship. Essential. Pastor Paul, because you, you might be the only safe person I can talk to. <laughs> They're looking at me kind of crazy. Imagine. How long you guys been married? Years. Oh, my God. She had to clap right there. 58 years. Now, now watch this. Watch this. I've been with you, baby, for 58 years because I was made to love you. See, that didn't even work with you. I was mandated to love you. Mm -mm. See, don't work. I was with you 58 years because I love you. And I receive your love. That's why I'm with you. It was hard. It was rough. It was, but at the end of the day, I'm with you because I love you. Imagine if that was the message. I'm with you. Jen, hey, baby. Come on, baby. You love me? Yeah, because I have to. Because <laughs> God told me to love you. He didn't tell me, <laughs> snap, snap, snap. You think about that. It's a mandate. But what happens? God is saying, pay attention to when it disappears. There's no love. Look at the consequence of relationship. You choose to love. I chose you for God so loved the world. He made a choice. He says, and I want you to get the same idea. Choose me. Choose me. There will be a consequence for those who don't choose me. You ought to tell them about that. Now, what's important about this choice? 58 years. 58 years is a long time. I bet you don't love her now that you did in the first 58 days. <laughs> no, nah, not at all. It, it is a maturing love. Yes. Your relationship with God should be maturing. There are certain things that should not be happening in your life now relative to your relationship with God, not God to you. God, are you there? Woo! How long have you been saved? Woo! 58 years, and you're still struggling with this? You're still struggling with it? Let's go back to maybe you should spend more time with me and not ask for things. You would know my character doesn't change if you spent time just with me. Woo. Woo. How many of you guys have insurance? House, car, boat, plane, train, on each other. Yeah. Where's your insurance policy? Glove compartment somewhere. Safety deposit box somewhere. How many times do you check it? <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> Never. Except when I need it. Mm. Every answer to every situation is in a book that you seldom read. Every relationship that you ever need is in a book that you seldom read. Everything about your future is in a book that you seldom read. Wow. 
I'm in a book that you seldom read. I am the book <laughs> that you seldom visit. But watch this so that you get it. You are a book, a letter, written, the Bible says, an epistle, written in you that will be read by men that you never take to anybody. <laughs> Nobody reads your book. <laughs> Nobody hears about your life. And who are you again? Who are you again? You're, you're my son, my daughter. When I said, go, all of you, into the uttermost of the world, preaching and witnessing, you might have missed that one. Matthew 28, Acts 1. You might have missed that one. I need you to go. Because the world is getting crazy. When you see stuff happening to Israel, Pay attention, yes, yes. but pay attention not for you. We're born again. If psh, he comes back, we're gone. But think about the person who doesn't know him. Could be your son, daughter, mother, father, somebody. You know they don't know. Whew, my God. My God. And God has called us. He's called us. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Getting ready to land. Thank you, God. Getting ready to land. <laughs> Is God truly God to you? I want you to be careful about saying that. Is God really God to you? What I'm saying is, is, um, He's God. There's no question about that. Is he God to you? Yes. Hanging out with Jesus, 12 men for three and a half years hung out with Jesus. And when it, the rubber hit the road, they booked. Whew, they scattered. How can you hang out with Jesus and not know the character of Jesus? Because I was caught up in the things and the miracles and the stuff. Yes, yes. And so I come to church. I'm hanging out in church. I'm having a great time. Ha, ra, ba, ba, yeah, all that. But when it comes, push comes to shove. Is it your God? That's the one you're going to find out. Whew. Whew. Do you really love each other? You know when you found that out? In adversity. Yeah, he's a knucklehead, but he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> He ain't going nowhere. In adversity. John 3, 16. When did God send Jesus? When we were a mess. And in the middle of the mess, he said, here comes the Messiah in the middle of the mess. And why did the world miss him, including the devil who heard him say over and over again, the cross is what's going to set us free then why did you send me to the cross? Because you didn't believe what I said. The cross is what sets us free. His shed blood on that cross sets us free. So is God, God, he is God. Is he your God? Yes. And one way you will find out, one way you will find out is, um, I think it's Romans Six it says in Romans six. This is for me, and so I know to sit down. <laughs> like I'll end because I'll keep talking. Romans six. What does Romans six say? Whose voice you listen to, you are the master to that voice. That voice is the master of you who you obey, who you listening to. That's how you know who, who's the real God, who you're listening to. And, and here's the cutting message, because the reason I'm standing here is some of this is for prayer. My treasure and my heart are the same. Some of you have some, some issues, 
You don't have to identify them, but I'm, I'm going to point to me. Some issues. Where I put my money is an indication where my heart is. So I got to do is look at my, my um, cash app on my, my checkbook. I'll find out where my money's going. Am I spending more money on those things than I am on the kingdom of God? Is he lying? No, they're together. Where do I spend my time? Time is a currency. Where do I spend my time? And am, am I spending my time with my Lord? I'm going to find out who my Lord is by evaluating my time. My talent. I got some gifts, some callings. Who am I using them for? What am I using them for? I'm going to find out all the stuff that God gave me. Am I using it for him or for his purpose? I'm going to find out. Whose voice am I listening to when the Bible, I mean not the Bible, the Spirit of God says, turn that off. And I argue with that voice. When the voice says, put that down, do I listen? Don't go with him. Don't go with her. Who am I listening to? Am I listening to my flesh? Am I listening to these goofy thoughts in my head? Or am I listening to God? It's going to be hard to listen to a God I don't know because I don't read about him. I don't spend time with him to know that's God. Whew. He's God. But that Bible, which I'm reading more, embracing more and more, has shown me just because you come to church mean, does not mean you know God. Mm-mm. No. Just because I speak in tongues does not mean I know God. Just because I give does not mean I know God. You know how I know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you speak in tongues and don't have love, you just make it noise. If you give your body for the wrong reason, you don't love, you just wasted your body. You have to know me through love. And love means we're going to commune one with another. You're going to learn my voice. Have you not understood that when Jesus said, here's the litmus test. My sheep know my voice. They know my voice. And what does that mean? The sheep hanging out with the shepherd. I know that voice. A lot of men out here, but I'm only following that guy. But here's the, here's the mess you up. I use that reference because that's what Jesus said. But that's not for the New Testament believer. That doesn't apply. We are no longer sheep in the New Testament. We're not referred to sheep at all. We're called saints. We're called saints, not sheep. Jesus is not referred to as a shepherd. He's, he's referred to as our Lord. <laughs> yeah, he's, not a he's still a shepherd, but that's Old Testament language. He says, I want you to think, renew your mind every day. Make decisions about me. Why? Because I want you to be men and women of God, not blind sheep following that's good, but mature from that. Am I talking to the right group? It's not a manipulation. What I'm about to say, because I'm going to end right here. This is not a manipulation. Matt, Pastor Matt, would be foolish to have anyone, let alone me, stand in front of you and not believe they have spent time with God. I wouldn't be here if he didn't believe that. Checking your faith. Not a manipulation. Can't make you believe. When Pastor Matt is speaking, you believe that he has spent time with God and you are hearing from God. Well, why do you come to this church? I believe that I, this man spends time with God and he believes that what he's telling us comes straight from God, whether it's studying, 
prayer or just a divine revelation. He hears from God. God does not embarrass us. There is now, therefore, no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. But here's the test. God's using my voice. But I do convict. I don't condemn, but I do convict. <laughs> I do convict. If your behavior ain't lining up, I'll call you out on it, not to shame you, not to shame you at all. I have a path for you. I have a plan for you. It is hard if you're thinking about yourself to say yes to God when he says, I want you to change that behavior. I want you to change that thinking because you'll get embarrassed. You'll be, you'll be full of shame. And, uh, but if you know God, you know, you know what's going to happen. You're going to say, he accepts me. He loves me no matter how I come. Now, the prodigal son did not come back to the father because he loved the father. He didn't come back because he loved the father. The Bible's real clear. He came back because he was hungry. He needed something. But that's what the father said. I'm here because I have all that you need. I love you. You have to discover that I love you. All of this, he said, all this is yours. All of it. I'm amazed when we read the scripture, we don't get. He left with his portion. So when he came back, why did he get anything? Give me my portion. He came back. His father said, get the fat, get the ring, get the shoes. My son is back. Why are you giving him anything? He took away everything because he's my son. All that I have is his. All that I have is yours. And now I'm checking your heart. And some of you already got to, oh, don't be defensive. He's going to ask me to pray. Yes, I am. About that thing. Yes, I am. <laughs> and you're already defense is coming up. Ooh, no, God, no. Yes, Lord, yes. Amen. I want you to be just like Jesus. You know what he said? My promises are always what? Yes and amen. You should not ever say no to me when I'm asking you for something. You should never say no. Only good. I only do good for you, not evil. So if I'm asking you to do something, it's for your good. And so I want you to look in your heart. And this is the, shh, I want you to look in your heart. You know where it's goofy. You know exactly. You know exactly where it's goofy. Goofy is my euphemism for things ain't working out right. You know exactly. I know my stuff. Can't hide God, can't hide from me. Hide it from you pretty good. God is not interested in your neighbor around you. He's, he's interested in you. Some people will go to hell because they did not accept the Savior who died for everyone. Some of you will struggle with stuff you don't have to struggle with because you won't believe. Today, you will walk out of here and nothing will change. That man was up there sweating and crazy. I don't know what he's talking about. Or you could hear the Holy Spirit talk to you. God, what is it in my life? What's going on? in my life are you my Lord in that area every other door I open to you except that one I don't open that door to you I don't talk to you about that whatever that is there could be several doors I don't open those up to you maybe that's why I don't pray a lot because you want to talk to me about what's behind those doors I don't want to do that I'm embarrassed I'm ashamed who I was oh while you were yet in sin, Christ died for you. While you were yet in sin, Christ loved you. You don't have to take a bath to come and take a shower. 
afraid of nothing. You don't be bargaining with God, negotiating with the Holy Spirit. You are not right, and you know it. This is not for debate. God trying to prove to you that he knows, and you're trying to manipulate him so he, he doesn't know quite and coming with excuses. Don't do that. Lord, you got me. You sent this dude today to bring a message to confront me. I'm confronted, and I'm arrested. You got me, Lord. You got me. Thank you for sending that guy to speak to me. Because the whole sermon was about this moment. The whole sermon was about this moment. What you need to understand is when you go to the unbeliever, all that you've learned, all the studies for the moment that you say, will you accept Christ? It's all, it comes to a moment. These transformative moments. Will you say yes to God in those moments? Get past me. My life is hid in Christ. That's what the Bible says. I'm complete in him. Hear Jesus speak to you. If he's speaking to you, stand to your feet. If you know, Lord, you've arrested me today, stand to your feet. Don't look around. Lord, you got me. I'm standing, by the way. I mean, if I was sitting, I'd, I would have stand, stood. Amen. Lord, you got me. And let me tell you a transparent, a transparent moment so you understand that the sermons that you get always happen to the pastor before before you get them, God, he's checking me. And so I'm struggling with the church, which is now almost 20 years. I said, God, wait a minute, did I hear you? 20 years, we ain't, we're no closer to having a brick laid than we were 20 years ago. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? I'm struggling going through it. He said, boy, slow up. And if I get teary here, it's because it's so real. He said, I want to check you on something. Why do you want to build this church? Why are you so adamant about building the church? When I went to a real place, God said, here's the reason why. The church is not the issue. You're still trying to be that son. Parents are dead, but you're still trying to please them by building a church. Yeah, revelation. That's your real motivation. You're trying to please folks who are dead and gone. Maybe if you adjust your focus. <laughs> Build it for me. That it would be a center where woo, people would come and learn about Christ. If that's your motivation, maybe that would change things. That's why I say I'm standing. I had to stand before God and say, what's the truth, Lord? And he said, that's the truth. You're still a five-year-old young, six-year-old young boy looking up at your parents, trying to please them, to do the right thing. Now that you know that, let me come in and minister to you because you're my son <laughs> in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> you are my son. Before you build a church, you're my son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. Woo! Set you free. Set you free. And that's my example to you. I can't give you any more. Something happens when you stand before God and he brings truth. Truth will transform you. Thank you, God. There are two ways to pray. Both are, both are acceptable. You can stay right where you are and pray. Or you can come up and have hands laid on you and pray in agreement with a man or woman of God. If I can get a couple of you to come up. It's up to you. I would be 
Sim.